This is Scott the Fix-It Guy. Our goal with our videos is to empower you to be able to do the repairs on your own and save a whole lot of money and also get that great feeling of having fixed it by yourself. Today we have a Blue Star oven that isn't heating and it's really easy to fix. We're gonna open up the door. We're gonna slide out all these racks. The bottom rack, you pull it towards you and then you have to kind of lift it up off. We'll go ahead and remove these top racks first. They just slide straight out. We're just going to put a new igniter in here and that's going to get it baking again. They last probably four or five years before you have to replace them. Pretty easy to do. So we're going to pull out the second rack. The bottom rack um, comes out a little bit differently. You want to pull it towards you and then lift up so it can slide off. There we go. And then there's a panel at the bottom. We just lift up on it a little bit and go ahead and slide it out. It has a pretty heavy piece of metal underneath it, so you want to support it and then bring that off to the side. Then you have access to the igniter. There's the Venturi tube, the burner tube, and the igniter is hooked to it. I'm going to use a angle tool to get in to two Phillips head screws here. I have an extension too to make it a little bit easier to get to. You could use a small Phillips head screwdriver would work also. So I'm just going to remove those two Phillips head screws and then I can get the igniter out. I have to remove a panel in the front underneath the door too. Pretty easy though, it has two Phillips head screws at the top. The ones on the bottom you don't have to remove. You can just do the ones on the top and then kind of slide the panel up to get them off the screws on the bottom. So get the two off on the right and left hand side. Once you get that panel off, you have good access to the wiring for the igniter. And in this model, it just has one igniter. So either one of the wires coming from the oven to power the igniter can be hooked up to either one of the new igniter wires. There's no polarity issue. So don't worry about that. Some, on some of these models, though, there's two igniters. It's a little bit trickier. But with the one igniter model, uh, pretty simple. So we get the panel out of the way, and then we see that there's some wires and there's wire nuts on this. This means this this one's had the igniter replaced uh, previously, so this is not the original igniter. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the old one. We already took it off of its screw so it comes right out. And then all we have to do is just take those wire nuts off of the um, old wires and we'll go ahead and splice in our new igniter. The new igniter is just a pretty cheap one, probably $15 on Amazon. It's an Electrolux um, flat oven igniter and they're very uh, common and they work for many different models of ovens. You can get the exact one for the Blue Star, but there's really not much difference in terms of how they work nor how, much, how long they last, but there's a big difference on price. So probably 15 bucks for the kind of generic Electrolux one. So I'm also going to test the voltage. I have it plugged in. I'm looking, I have the oven set for heat and I saw that there is 120 volts coming down to the igniter. So I know that everything's working except the igniter, just to rule out there being a problem with the thermostat. So it's definitely an igniter issue. So I've got the new one with me comes with a couple of new wire nuts. You can use the new ones or the old ones, doesn't, doesn't really matter. You can see a little bit difference in the um, how long the igniter is, the ceramic portion, but that's really the only difference. And that doesn't have any bearing on whether it'll work on this model. It works, works just fine and gives you the same duration of uh, how long it works. So I'm splicing in the the wires, remember you don't have to worry about which wire goes where, either igniter wire can go to either oven wire. So I got it all done and I'm gonna push the new igniter into the cavity. We get the wires out of the way and you can use a zip tie if you'd like to, to kinda hook them further out of the way, but as long as they're up and out, then you can put the cover back on. It just slides, the bottom part slides in on the two bottom screws and then you can add the two upper screws to hold it in. You could literally do this whole procedure in under 10 minutes. So 
So zip in these two screws. And then we have to attach the igniter to the burner tube. Pretty easy. I'm going to line it up and then just using, just by hand, we'll go ahead and start the two Phillips head screws. And then to finish it, to tighten them, you can use a small screwdriver or you can use uh, what I'm doing here using an angle tool from DeWalt and then an extension that just makes it super fast and easy. I got my DeWalt angle tool over at Home Depot. I think they're probably 30 bucks, but it's really rugged and has lasted me many years already. So we've got those tight, and then I'm going to set the oven for 350, and I'm just going to watch how the igniter does. So turn on the turn on the oven, turn off the lights, so we can see it a little bit better. Here's the old one. So we see it glowing. We know it has power. We know it's functioning. When it gets hot enough, it'll let uh, the safety valve will let gas flow in to the Venturi tube and then it'll, it'll ignite. We just want to make sure that's all going to work. It takes usually about 30 seconds. When igniters get old, it takes longer and longer and that's an indication that it's time for a new igniter. Sometimes it ignites kind of late and you get a little tiny explosion inside your oven, which you don't want. So there we go, nice blue flame, little yellow tinges is okay. So we'll turn that off. And we're just going to put it all back together, put in the lower panel, and then we'll put the racks back in, and we're done. So putting in a new igniter solves a lot of potential oven problems. One is there's no heat. Another is uh, it doesn't get up to the temperature that you want. Another is it takes a long time to heat. These are all indications that the igniter is just getting old and it's not doing its job. So again, about the four to five year mark, depending on how much you use it, you'll have to replace the igniter. But it's easy, inexpensive. We're gonna put the bottom rack back in. We slide it in first, and then we push it in a little bit of an angle and then let it drop into position. We'll put in the other two racks, and then we're gonna put on our analog thermostat we're going to heat it up to 350 and just make sure that it's calibrated correctly so that the thermostat 350 matches the analog thermostat 350. 350 is just a common baking temperature, so we usually use that as a test. So we've got our upper rack in, get our analog in position, and then probably take about 20 minutes, 30 minutes to get to 350. So we go 350 and this tested out really good. So this solved our problem for the Blue Star oven. I hope this is effective for you and you get your oven going soon. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe when you get a chance.